folks, it's Tuesday. Welcome to War New Between the Rolls, uh, your favorite talk show in the D&D realm. I know. I know. You don't have to tell us that. <laughs> we're, we're happy to provide this service to you. As long as you follow us on Twitch, follow us on Twitter, take a look at our YouTube archive if you want to shoot the shit about D&D. Join our Discord if you want to buy our really cool crap that's going to be on sale on the 13th so don't buy, don't buy our shit until the 13th but you can get a cool phone case or a, yeah. new shirt or a, a throw pillow stuff like that most importantly if you want to be on this show or you want to be on the one shot a week from saturday m hobo inc twitter or gmail hit us up we will try and get you on there uh tonight we're going to be discussing the halvesies but first if you want some custom dice try at pirate dog dice on twitter Hit them up. Let them know what you want. Maybe you get something cool like Terran's Bard Dice. Uh, maybe yeah. you know, maybe, maybe you get a piece of crap that you shouldn't have paid for. Uh, and if awesome. your game stinks, unlike ours, uh, try some Adventure Sense from OddFishGames.com, also the maker of the oh, Shine God. System. So if you want to write gooder, uh, check out their <laughs> Shine System. Coming soon, their uh, Kickstarter for How to RPG with Their Cat. I have seen the preview videos. They look phenomenal. You will love it. And I've actually played it, and I had a good time. Uh, finally, last but certainly not least, uh, what's that, that thingy that we're doing? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. We need to talk about it. I can't. can't Some really piece of crap about. meeting or something. Oh, no. It was the convention. The virtual convention. That's what it is. MurderHoboCon.com. Check it out. August 1st, a Sunday. It's going to be a charity con. Uh, so once the bills are paid, all the money goes to our charity du jour, du year, whatever, mm -hmm. uh, American Cancer Society. So we are not keeping one red cent of that shit. Uh, so at IRS, keep on moving. Uh, I don't want that headache. Uh, tonight, we're going to discuss the halvesies, as I pointed out, but let's introduce you to the panel who's going to talk. Uh, we will start with the new member, uh, although he's been on a lot of shows, and I think he's got his dice. Do you not? It, it came. I haven't looked at him yet because uh, what kids went and got it. That, that would have been the first thing I would have done is just yeah. torn open and, and, oh, and bathed yeah. in the glory. John, <laughs> tell us about yourself. <laughs> Yeah, my name is John Boland, and I'm a uh, dungeon master, uh, mostly. I don't run any websites or anything, but I, I play D&D once a week, actually twice a week now. Uh, I'll typically, uh, I've been doing it uh, for fifth edition since 2016, I want to say, maybe early, late 15, and uh, I mostly run on roll, roll20.net. Now, are you going to be doing uh, your thing on Roll20.net for Murder HoboCon? I will probably use it, uh, but we'll see. It, it helps because you get the map and all that fun stuff. So. No, no, not a problem. Uh, the Murder HoboCon uh, private game rooms uh, are an option. They aren't mandatory, so if you're a streamer, you don't need to use our game room. Instead, we'll make our game room a link to yours, and you can run your show the way you want it. Uh, John's got a game. Uh, what was the time slot you picked? I think it's going to be at like 1 <coughs> p.m. or 7. I have an alternate time. I don't... Now you'll get first pick. First pick was, I think, 1 p.m., I think. 1 p.m. to 4 p.m., folks. Three-hour game. A three-hour tour. <laughs> Ginger and Marianne will be there. It's cyberpunk. It's going to be uh, fifth edition rules, but basically... Cool it'll be quite altered because it's it's basically set in a cyberpunk setting nice so nice. awesome so murder you can't sign up for the games yet now if you're a dungeon master a gm uh or you want to do a seminar or a panel please submit make your submissions now uh tickets are not available for these games uh you can't sign up for them yet that's going to be probably july 1st or the week right before that uh but if you're a dm gm's uh panelist or seminar individual 
sign up now because we do have a limited amount of slots and we're offering a limited amount of tickets because this is our first one and we really don't know what the hell we're doing. So that being said, uh, somebody else who doesn't know what the hell they're doing. Carol, tell us about yourself. <laughs> what? You don't think I know what I'm doing? Well, fine. Hi, everyone. My we all saw your test twitch. Jesus, that was bad. You did not Stunk see on ice. Well, they didn't actually see it. So I know who was in there. It wasn't them. <laughs> hey everyone, my name is Carol. I am a longtime gamer, occasional GM, and a commission pin mini painter. And since we get to pimp our stuff here, uh, I'm actually going to dip my toe into the miniature, the world of miniature uh, painting streaming. I am starting my own Twitch stream uh, where I will paint mi minis based on. I want my focus to be on characters from actual PCs from games I've either played in or watched. So, hey, maybe my entire set of Critical Role minis that's sitting there will finally get painted, as well as some of the PCs that I have to paint for games that I'm actually playing. Uh, and, hey, actually, I have a commission coming in from someone who it's going to be a character, so I'm going to paint it on the stream. Uh, my stream is going to be on, uh, let's see, it starts on Saturday from 12.30 p.m., so it's early in the afternoon. Eastern so Standard Time. Eastern Time. All times are Eastern because I'm in Eastern. And I have, right now, I have a Monday one scheduled starting at 6 o'clock. Uh, so right now, they're an hour and a half, but hey, I might make them longer depending on things. And also, depending on things go, I may add a Wednesday night on there, too, but not yet. Uh, but things are going really well. Uh, I'm trying to think what else I say. Oh yeah, of course, my channel. Well, if you're watching this, I actually posted it and you see my name in the chat. It's muses underscore touch. So muses underscore touch at twitch.com, I think is what the whole link is. Do a tiny URL. Because those are way easier to... I'm not yeah, sure. It's not Do that the tiny hard. URL. I just link it everywhere. I just copy and <laughs> like it. There it's not go. that hard. Last but certainly not least, David. David, tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay. Hi, I'm David. And uh, yeah, you can usually find me here on Tuesdays. Uh, if you miss me here, <laughs> I will be on our um, Thursday night show, which runs opposite of Craig, uh, called Cacophony. It's our little soap opera that we've been keeping going for a while. Uh, also, uh, I am on the Calamity campaign. I play Ingve, <laughs> the Ravenkin. So, yeah, that's where you can find me. I also will be uh, tweeting updates on Murder HoboCon, so you can follow me at D uh, at D and Devious on Twitter. So, and if you're a band or a musical group or a performance, yes. he's the guy to talk to. He's the one uh, doing oh. all the legwork for that. And actually, if you're a vendor or an artist, uh, you can talk to me. And I'm at, well, because I have a theme, I'm at muses underscore touch on Twitter. So it, you got to stay consistent, man. There's I know. Nothing wrong with that. I know. <clears throat> oh, no, not everything, because I didn't have that brand for at the beginning. So not everything is that, but a lot of it is. Folks, uh, we had three games that we uh, played this past weekend. Uh, everybody had a good time. We even had uh, some brand new hobos. But first, let's go ahead and talk about uh, the Calam or I'm sorry, the Cacophony campaign. The other C. Oh, 250. <laughs> too many the C's. Calamity campaign. The Calamity. Calamity. Uh, Calamity. Uh, Calamity. David, you're the in Clamato. it. Tell, <laughs> tell us about Looming Peaks. Looming Peaks. Oh my God. That was, yeah, that was a real backbreaker. It was a end. time. Well, let's just say it was a time. Uh, <laughs> uh, as our episode starts off, we pick up uh, where we left off after we had uh, fought off a juvenile frost giant and ended up in uh, the local barbarian like village that was nearby. Uh, anyway, uh, we're continuing our journey to try to find on, uh, well, it's an epic quest now to find the quest to find Stinky. So that is, uh, yeah, that's Camille's lost love, uh, the barbarian. So oh, Lord. yeah, we're in Freckland. So we 
kind of crashed here too and uh yeah it's the quest for stinky that's what i'm calling it frank <laughs> so <laughs> so anyway uh we we picked up where we left off um we find out that we have to make this trek. Uh, they tell us uh, about roughly where we need need to go to possibly find a Stinky's tribe. Uh, so we have to navigate through these mountains, this mountainous terrain. It is, yeah, it's all frozen. So welcome to the frozen waste uh, of Frecklin. So as we begin to make our trip, we are given a guide, a guide who's like, almost seven feet tall by the name of Nibbles. So uh, he is he is a young barbarian, what, about 16, Frank, or something like that? He's an adolescent. Adolescent. Almost Hormones seven, are raging. Yeah, almost seven feet tall, swings the battle axe of a juvenile frost giant. <laughs> so massive damage, folks. So anyway, as we pick up, as we begin our trek across the frozen tundra, we are met with a pack of uh, wolves, regular wolves, I believe, to begin with. Uh, just when we think we're clear from that, uh, yeah, we run into the big bad, which is uh, a dire wolf. So, <laughs> so after battling through that, uh, having to go, uh, ha having to find places to make shelter and yeah getting our fires kicked out because yeah you don't light fires during the day uh <laughs> when, when you're trying to navigate through hostile territory um yeah so uh it was a number of survival texts to, to, to try to find shelter not freeze to death uh daphne found that out the, the hard way uh, even though we had a couple of pelts that we were able to salvage and make awesome looking capes and stuff like that from uh, also um, yeah we continued our trek of uh, pressing forward and through like a crevasse and as we're making our way through the this range we get assaulted by flying apes so yeah not flying monkeys flying apes and in the midst of uh, that encounter, all of a sudden, the, we just get pelted by an avalanche. And uh, this bizarre snowstorm-like thing rushes through. And we get our first sighting of a white dragon. So we suspect nice. this is the, the white death that Stinky was uh, recruiting us to kill. So, so we take refuge in, uh, in a cave and that's pretty much where we left off. So if you want to find out how we do that the following week, uh, yeah, check us out and see how we do and all that. So it's, it's a pretty epic adventure. So lots of fun, lots of, lots of roles. Yeah. And Dave continues with his sucky percentage in D12 roles. So Yeah. <laughs> So if you want to see really? the guy, tune in next Thursday. That's, exactly. that's the takeaway. Uh, next game was uh, a one-shot, episode 251, Fanatica. John was the first alternate. Unfortunately, all four of those bastards showed they up. Showed up. They showed up. How uh, dare they? John, you got to watch uh, most of it. Uh, tell us a little bit about Fanatica, please. So yeah, Fanatica, I believe, uh, had uh, two new players. Kyle and Kaylee, and then uh, Jeff, uh, my friend Jeff's uh, second appearance was on there. Um, As was Andrew's. Yeah. Andrew, yeah. They're, they're and, going for the dice, man. They're going for it. <laughs> and, <laughs> and then there, so I remember that, was it Kyle that played the tortle? Yes. Yes. Okay, yeah. So you got a tortle, um, and then, uh, Kaylee was a gnome that rode on his back. Mm -hmm. Boomer, I think that's her name. Boomer, right? Yeah. yeah. Actually, and she rode on Andrew's back. Andrew oh, so was the Andrew's... turtle. Okay. Oh, Andrew was the turtle. Okay. Andrew was the turtle. That's right. All right, and then uh, Jeff played a um some kind of warlock, I think. Mm -hmm. Oh, it was a tabaxi. Yeah. He was the cat. Yeah, yeah. Carol. Lucky. It was a tabaxi. He was lucky. Yeah, Kyle was the other barbarian. Or right. No? That's... Was he? No, the turtle was the barbarian. And so was the gnome. Boy, was you would think. 
One would think Frank would know his own game. So yeah, it, is, it has been a bad week, and it's only Tuesday, folks. <laughs> going, I know John. the feeling. I know the feeling. So I know they showed up to the. Well, they started going along. They found this sign. It pointed uh, to three different places. One of them pointed straight up for Fanatica. Um, I can't remember how they got to Fanatica. They they ended up in it. And the guy taking a dump in the bushes told him to go there. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> I remember okay, that. I forgot that. Okay, wow. yeah. And then once they get there, there's uh, guards that are asking them, you know, what are they doing there? And they basically barely got in because they seemed like incompetent, I think, at the first of the guards. <laughs> they were they were less than stellar. <laughs> Um, I know there was a, there was a scene where they talked to this guy. Was he the mayor? Was like a big, tough guy. Uh, he was he was the head uh, priest. Head priest. Okay. And then there was a part where they were watching this. It, it seemed like people were getting recruited in this cult, and so there were the, these people that were chanting, and uh, there was this guy, and he was. Get ready to cast some kind of spell or something. Uh, yeah, you ought to you ought to fill in the rest because that, that's uh, about where I wasn't able to keep going. Yeah, Kyle I got a call for work. work so. ah, work? No, work. Yeah, Come on, on, man. Work. I was on call shit. this past yeah, week. Priority. Send your, send your yeah. dice back. Send your dice yeah, back. I, I, that's I, 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 I should. <laughs> Kyle, Not a real role the, player. <laughs> Kyle was the uh, war forged. Uh, Rogue, aka H one R O. Yes, uh, hero. that's right. That's right. Yeah. So, uh, the, unfortunately, much to the chagrin of uh, live viewers, they never hit each other. None of them <laughs> rolled a critical <laughs> fail. Wait, that's are bad. You live viewers or you? I I oh. think we all tune in to see you guys pummel the shit out of each other. <laughs> oh. I, I mean, again. Chances of me killing you guys, chances of you guys killing each other. Well, that's for sure. Actually, I saw that's your what best it, attempt at trying to kill us. Hey, that's the sort of, that that is the focus of our show, man. <laughs> Critical failures. So. Now, now the one joyous part near the end, and it, it's not quite. I'm not going to tell you what happened. I'm just going to kind of clue you in. Uh, two of them were busy uh, flapping their gums in the middle of the plaza while the other two were trying to hide uh, and they stumbled upon the bad guy. Uh, and then one of those two moved off into the shadows, uh, leaving <laughs> one V bad guy <laughs> until everybody else was like, oh, so, shit, hey, that's a problem. <laughs> so, so you're saying what you're saying is they've seen the show before and knew exactly what to do. It, it, it was funny. They opted it to appears. split the party, yep. which is fine. But then their perception rolls were like a seven and a four. <sighs> so while they're standing here, Jack and their jaws looking up at the celestial things. There's a fight over here, and Hero blends into the shadows, leaving the other guy to fight. So, to be fair, I, I, I almost got one. <laughs> so, uh, you'll have to watch the show. It is in the archive, it's still on Twitch, uh, but it was fun. Uh, again, two brand new players, two players with uh, their second show. Uh, so, uh, you know, getting the new blood in, if you're interested in doing the one shot, hit us up. We will try and get you on there as soon as possible. I mean, hell, John's been back three times. Tonight's number uh -huh. four. So, you know, we can't, be all, we can't be all douchey, just mildly douchey. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the, the final episode was 252, end of geese or gays or however you want to pronounce it. Thank this is geez. the tri-generational Margu campaign. And these guys have been on a mini quest because in order to get rid of middle Frank's lycanthropy, they all had to come under the geese gays quest of the sisters of the moon. Uh, a dragon appeared. Uh, and I will say, kicked the living shit out of them uh knocking man fang down to i think one hit point and knocking two others to single digits and these guys are sixth level 
Ow. Uh, it was ugly. Uh, copious more bitters uh, got his face snapped at, and I just barely missed doing some tremendous damage. Uh, but when I told him that the dragon breathed and it was 16d6 damage, <laughs> the pucker factor was off the charts. Uh, spoiler alert, I rolled two sets of 8d6s. My first set of 8d6s, five ones. <laughs> five, five ones out of eight roll. I was oh. pissed. Your uh, dice don't want to kill people. I see how it is. Yeah, the, the dice, uh, the dice gave us away this time. Yeah, uh, Frank, Frank doesn't kill people. Dice kill people. That's right. That's, that's right. right. That's, that's right. The way it always works. Amendment two B, I think, is what it is. Uh, <laughs> but uh, that show is also. Uh, over on the archive. It's also on Twitch. Uh, the tri-generational is always a zoo. We've got grandpa, his two sons, his nephew, and then his two grandsons. So if you haven't seen it, it is a shit show. They have bounty hunters after them. Uh, they had to make a deal with the army whose general doesn't realize that they were kind of responsible for killing his brother. Uh, they are just looking for a hidey hole at this point in time. Uh, I have given them the map of the Halfling Kingdom, told them I don't care which direction they go, just give me a heads up so I can write it. And they said, we're going this way. <laughs> so... God only knows what they're going to do. Some of them want to go try and find the dragon's horde. Some of them want to get the GTFO and go to a capital where they can blend in. Some of them want to visit the East Coast and uh, enjoy the culinary delights. And at least one of them wants to find a whorehouse. So uh, with that group... Let me guess which one. <laughs> uh, yeah, you'd be surprised. <laughs> there, there's two good choices there. Uh, but yeah, if you haven't seen the Frank show, because there's four of us, four Franks, uh, take a look at it. It is a riot uh and uh they just uh you know it's three generations of family getting together and having fun at the game so take a look at that uh with that being said those were our three offerings for you uh we hope you take a look at it uh and again if you want to be on the one shot or on this talk show mhobo inc twitter gmail hit us up and with that i turn it over to carol all right so the topic of tonight is half seas, so half orcs and half elves. And I think that's the only half seas there are, aren't there? Uh, so uh, the first thing on the list, because I'm going by his list here, is origins and lore. And it's funny because you wrote pop culture, not much, but I think there's more than what you have listed there. So I'm going to go around the horn and you could pick either half elf or half orc. Uh, and it could be from name a famous one that a lot of people know. So uh, let's start with I'll start with you, David. Uh, half orc. Well, of course I can. I'll pick that one because that one's easy. Ford critical role. Yay! Come on. Yeah, I was <laughs> that is the most too. famous half orc out there now. So. I think he is. What and... is this critical role you keep talking about? Yeah, yeah. Some <laughs> other show. <laughs> Don't Somebody, yeah. There it. is no other show. There is only Zool. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you love him? Why do you think he's awesome? Because he is not the the your typical half orc, and we'll get to that when we when we talk about stereotypes and all that. But uh, when I was reading about the, the description in uh, uh, in the handbook and through D and D Beyond. Uh, it is their bloodlust, you know, that, I mean, it's the orc blood mixed with the human blood. They still have all the properties of an orc, but their human blood gives them the edge because they, they are actually critical thinkers. Critical role, critical thinkers. Yeah. Uh, but, but seriously, they, they are able to think, strategize uh, more efficiently and not immediately consumed by rage. So, you know, they still have the bl bloodlust, but, but anyway, 
Ford is a good example because he didn't live up to any of that. He never raged or anything like that. So he never had a blood rage or anything like that. So, uh, and he played against it because he was a caster. He was a warlock, which if you're going to have a half orc, is a damn good class to have for it. Travis knew what he was doing when he created Ford. So, you know, constitution strength for a hex blade can't beat it. So. Yeah, he's, I always say I liked his character and he was very cultured and, mm-hmm. you know, uh, as I said, that I keep thinking there's got to be other famous half works out there, but you're right. And I'm, I'm sure on. they are. <laughs> the ones that I know are from video games, and uh, that would be Garona from uh, oh, World right. of Warcraft. Da-da, yeah, yeah, yeah. Da-da, of course. Da-da, 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 Garona. There I you mean... go. <laughs> no, but she, That's but she right. is she actually is a half, half Draenei half orc. That's right. Oh. She's half orc. I forgot she was half orc. Mm-hmm. Um, I know, because that's where you get a lot of full-blooded orcs, and Mm -hmm. they're interesting. Warcraft orcs are very interesting. And they really They're not cut and dry bad guys, either. Right, and they really wrote that character very well and very sympathetic in in the Warcraft movie, which they they did did a beautiful job portraying Garona. So... so, I like her in in the game, too, so... Mm -hmm. All right, John, you next. It could be either, it's probably going to be a half elf, and I can think of more than what uh, Frank is thinking. I can't really think of it. I actually don't know of any. Any? No, cause I, I guess I just don't read enough. Well, it's, in The Hobbit, the movie series that was just out, wasn't the, the, the ranger, wasn't she a half elf? Is she half elf or just? Or just two dwarf. different, two different elf uh, kind, I guess. I don't know, but actually, yeah. no. I, I no, your warm is the one I'm thinking of, but uh, I'm gonna go to Frank though, because Frank has one. I know he'll want to talk about. Most famous half elf of all is Tannis from the Dragonlance series. Yeah, okay, I remember that. Yeah, Tannis. Yeah. He uh, he uh, was, he bore the tortured soul. Uh, one from each side and accepted by none. So for me, Tannis Half Elven uh, was an excellent character, but of course. He was a pig. <laughs> <everything> <laughs> what did you produce, say? Our producer. Uh, everything that uh, he uh, did uh, was based around his persona. And I think Hickman and Weiss did an excellent job. <laughs> <laughs> So I'll get to the one that actually I believe you guys are forgetting is I believe in the red, just the Lord of the Rings. I believe Strider is a half elf. Uh, yes. No, he's an ancient yeah. race of humans. Actually. He's, human. No, he's long. Li- no, he lives. He looks longer than a human. Uh, mm-hmm. he's, a, he's a half elf. Token, uh, yeah, sure. token fans, feel free to hit us up. Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure he is. I knew. I knew he was in love with Arwen, the elf. Right. The that, Arwen. That's why he's got such a connection. But no, he also is okay. much. She is longer lived than a human, so I'm pretty sure he's a half elf actually. But he looks more human. Yeah, you know, a lot of times. That's an interesting thought. A lot of times, half elves. And even half orcs, uh, where they're always portrayed, it's the, it's always the um, like half elves. It's the elven features that seem to that we seem to have pointy ears and such. And with half orcs, it always seems to be orcish side that sort mm-hmm. of takes over. So I mean, uh, do you think that it, this is just the norm, or do you think there's room for uh, the other type of you know a half orc that looks? mostly human and and would you know that that you would have a hard time telling was it orc or do you think or do you think that would make uh the role play maybe a little less interesting because then it's not that uh, they can pass as just a human uh let's see al john <laughs> how are you well i think um i've seen in some of the D products some npcs that were um half orc that were not they didn't look really orcish they might have had a slight orc you know look to them um i can't remember off the top of my head what those were however <laughs> um okay. but no, i i do remember in uh monty cook's uh tallest or 
the city, the giant city thing he did. That's like a book about a, it's like a boat anchor sized book. And it's, it's about, it's spelled P T O L U S. Uh, that, that product had a bunch of half orcs in it and half elves and some of the NPCs, I think there were, were not real obvious that they were, uh, that they were mixed. So it's just typically when people play them and when I see, you know, they're described, it's typically they look like an orc or they look like, you know, an elf. They have pointy sure. ears. But said, so do you think, do you think um, it takes away from the RP at all if they go with the thing that just totally passes a human or, you know, because no. you might not have as Maybe. much of the hatred or that's, there's also an interesting thing there too. But all right, David, how about you? How about your opinion? This is uh, all I think it, I think it would be great uh, because it kind of helps you go against the the stereotypical depiction of you know a half race like that. You know everybody expects the you know the physical features to be out there. What if it was just only the it, it was rather like very very large but very human looking like half orc. The only thing that's obvious is the blood rage, you know. I mean, that's possible. Uh, half elves. Well, I mean, my home game that we play, my my character, even though he's an Asimar, has a half elf in in his bloodline. So, and we're playing that as his end to get into Evereska, which is an elf, you know, is pretty much a forbidden place for beings other than elves so what does he now i'm just curious what does he look like uh he's human human but uh silver skin kind of bluish tone so oh, nice and so he looks so he's half elf but he looks mostly half human off uh, yeah. other, other than the fact he's got silver so he looks mostly asimar his mm -hmm. celestial traits really come out there. that's interesting right but you can tell moon elf uh runs in his blood because of his coloring so. yeah very cool sounding. And I was going to ask Frank, but Frank seems to have <laughs> something going on. At I, think, I think he's a puppy, puppy wrangling. So. Is he puppy wrangling? I mean, it's okay, Frank. You back? Oh, he's, he's you muted. muted. You muted. That's the beauty of the headphones. I can wander around. And... <laughs> so, yes, how, about, how about your opinion? Frank? Uh, I, I think it would be incumbent on the DM to go ahead and utilize uh, standard perception rules by the people because uh, a lot like Tannis, and I'll refer to him frequently in this uh, area, uh, there's something wrong with him. Uh, he is clearly a mixture. He's got pointed ears. He's got a beard. There's something wrong. And the inherent I'll use the word racism for it. The inherent racism for the people that he deals with is always going to have a negative effect on him. Now, even though his maybe his uh, charisma stats would have been good, I mean, he was the leader of the group. He knew what he was doing. He had his shit squared away. But when dealing with everybody else, uh, the inherent internal built-in racism in that system would have presented a negative effect on that when dealing with him. And I think that would be incumbent, not so much on the player, uh, yeah. b because you could, you could play, you could RP a very good argument, but if you're dealing with somebody who just hates you because of your lineage, you're, you're going to face a negative consequence of that. So even though, you have a charisma of 18 and you get plus four and you roll a 16 and you get a dirty 20. If somebody hates you, you're not going to persuade them. I mean, uh, think about politics, think about religion and think about rearing a child. Uh, those three sections pretty much are cemented for a large number of people. And I think that's going to be a negative. You can give a very tangible uh, inherently good argument for A, but if the person you're dealing with is, is stuck in their uh, section of B being the right way, 
the likelihood of you changing their mind is not going to work. So I think it's incumbent on the DM to go ahead and promote that and use it as a push for the storyline. Uh, you know, think of all the great speeches in the world and you know, there's some asshole there. No, that's, no, that's there's not. always that one. Yeah. Yeah, always and, is and, and then they should come to the forefront and be not a protagonist, but an impediment to the goal. Mm -hmm. my opinion over yeah no that that sounds good um one of the things that i was thinking about uh as an example to play against the the physical appearance type and all that a good example it's not related to orc or half elf in particular but just the mechanics of it how it was done is in marvel movies thor loki is a half giant runt and when he's exposed to cold like that his complexion changes and stuff like that mm. so you know you could have like for example a half elf that's half drow can't really tell until he goes out in the sunlight and skin suddenly turns dark you know and he's repelled by the light so that's you know it's the... interesting concept mm -hmm. uh... I think so. so the most famous housey that i know of is actually not half orc or half elf it's half Vulcan, which is Spock. <laughs> that's right? it. Well, that's I pretty close to half That's elf. pretty close. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I was going to say, he is yeah. there sort of like elves. Yeah. I mean. yeah. They do a good job of that character, though, of the dichotomy between the, the Vulcan upbringing and human and his feelings and how he has to always fight mm -hmm. um, one or the other, depending on what is, needs to happen. So... Yeah, wow, that is that is I like a that. good example, John. It is a good example you know, of what a half elf is like. Yeah. It's a, it may not be D and D, but that actually is an excellent example of yeah of a half something. You know, of, mm -hmm. that's that's a great example. Um, so the next section was stereotypical traits. Now it was touched on something about like Tannis, you know have really good charisma. I think it's very interesting how, maybe not hated, I feel like that's an awfully strong term, but I believe that, you know, humans and elves look at, you know, like half elves with suspicion at the very least, or at least that's the way it's always been portrayed. You know, and orcs are definitely, half orcs are definitely, you know, definitely looked at with suspicion, considering that a lot of times orcs are considered bloodthirsty, you know, monsters in a way. Although mm -hmm. the way things are now in D&D, &D, a lot of that's changing, which I think is really cool. Um, but the thing about the elves, the half elves, I think is interesting, even though they're hated by both sides, they also have, I think, a boost to, the, to, to their charisma to deal with both sides. So, you know, mm -hmm. I thought that was kind of interesting. You know, it's sort of like, you get a bonus, but you also have a penalty at the same time. Uh, well, I don't know. What do you, you said? Uh, I said, so hated by both sides. I don't know. What are your thoughts on that? Do you think it's true that, that the way he's got a word there, hated by both sides is right? Or do you think that things are changing in the D&D &D realm uh, these days? Let's see. Who do I, I'll start with Frank this time since I've started with everybody else. I, I'm going to say... <laughs> and this will piss people off plain and simple uh while the DD world continues to change and evolve into something more akin to uh a higher society which i'm all in favor of the problem that you're always going to have is that human beings are inherently biased whether they be players dms some dude at the shopping mall People just don't like differences. Uh, a lot of us tend to embrace the differences and have no problems with it. Me personally, I hate everybody, so I treat everybody equally. I just great <laughs> disdain for everything. Uh, but I think when you're playing a game, especially one like ours, I think you have to have a central either figure or group or goal. You fight the Nazis because the Nazis are inherently bad. 
Now everybody's like, you should make orcs bad. Okay, you know what? Fuck it. Make gnomes bad. Okay, all gnomes are fucking assholes. <laughs> yeah, gnomes are assholes. Elves. Make them the bad guys. Yeah, elves, high elves especially. Come especially on, Jesus. Them. Yeah, uh, you know, pick one. Pick humans for God's sake. It doesn't matter. Just go with a group. Go. A group of cultists can be a mixed race. Right. Okay? Use that, but. And this is what angers me the most is, especially on social media, you know, yeah, you shouldn't make anybody bad. Well, then go fucking play backgammon. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you don't have slavers that they're actually really good people. You know, they, they just have this slavery problem. No, they're, they're bad people because they're slavers. Uh, these people want to take over the world. Those are bad people. Gnomes, half forks, humans, it doesn't fucking matter. Pick one and run with it. It's your world, okay? You can have everybody be bad. I mean, people on the losing side of war don't automatically wake up the next day and go, oh, well, you know, we were wrong. <laughs> no, that's not what happens, okay? I, I, I'm not That's what I love about Game of Thrones. You know how you said uh, everybody's bad? Yeah. Think about that show. There are no good people in that show. There are show. no good people in yeah. that They are all bad. Yeah, they, they, they have flaws and things of that nature. So don't try yeah, yeah. and sugarcoat everything, which is sadly how I look at 5e. Um, you know, ah, you know, let's 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 sugarcoat this and let's go ahead and go. Okay. Gritty realism. The Cthulhu episodes on our Thursday show are gritty because they are deep, dark, and starchy. And those are our best shows. Okay. More of you folks tune in for Cthulhu because you like the freakish horror in it. Okay. If I ran a game of unicorns mating, uh, (laughs) this show would be short lived. (laughs) Pick a group and show a natural hatred so that you can focus in your rage and aggression on them for me that's how the dm does it these guys are slavers these guys are pirates these guys are autocrats and i don't care what race it is fuck the gnomes fuck the high elves fuck the half orcs whatever pick one and there's your goal go after that next campaign choose somebody else dwarves or if they're assholes and in lord of the rings eh, dwarves are kind of dicks so the the thing of it, the, although I will I will add this to that statement. Um, no, it, you don't have to pick like a race. I mean, you can also go with there's good and bad in every race. Mm-hmm. So like you've got yeah you've got like a set of cultists human. <laughs> that doesn't mean every human is bad, and that's you know that's that's a fairly real world thing too. Um, so you know your groups don't have to be an all-encompassing race. I, I think that's one of the things that D and D is trying to get away from is having everybody in that race be classified as good or bad. Masons. And I do like Masons that. are all evil. <laughs> that's an organization, though. That's not like that's a right. Race. That's and right. And that's exactly. what. And that's what. I mean, and that's a great point. You know, you could have groups within that race that are evil. But without having the whole race be evil. Well, Star Star Trek uh, is a perfect example. Yeah. Um, when some of the members of the Federation sided with the Klingons, eh, you know, there's there's your group. That's the group that you have to go after. Mm-hmm. They can be mixed. There was a Romulan. There was humans. There were Klingons. That's your group. Not all the Klingons are bad. Not all the humans are bad. But define your group. And you know what? Throw it in. Uh, the, the people from Boston are all dickheads who can't talk right. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so, oh, there goes our Boston listeners. I can't say Her. such an <laughs> asshole. Sadly, I can't R1. say such an asshole without getting rid of the R's because there are no R's in such an asshole. So. I, I watch this old house. I know how you guys talk. SARS. You see me yeah, you get all the, the SARS time. out there and SAR wood. <laughs> you saw wood? SAR. SAR wood. SAR. Yeah, I don't know. We get Bob rid of Vila, the R's. Come on. <laughs> yeah, but we don't. 
I mean, I pa- no, we get rid of the yard. So it's I pack my car and have it yard. Nice. We don't add the R's in. <laughs> All right, let's see. Now what we're was going it? on that. Oh my God, I don't remember what the damn question was. They hated by both sides, and I was trying to figure out how to quite put that in a question. How to how to change things up with Yeah, those. how do you change? Fine, you know how do you, let's just let's just go to like breaking stereotypes. So he listed some of the stereotypical traits or the one things that you know when you get the your when you pick a race you'll get it. I mean, well, any class, but I don't think you have like prominent classes anymore like you did in the day where you multi-classed and you had to pick half one. orcs pretty much go some kind of a fighter type mm-hmm. it may not be a fighter specifically but they usually do martial type class but so, now in 5e with tasha's we got an addendum to that now so mm-hmm. they gave us uh, they gave us an out on that to, so we're not pigeonholed uh, for a particular race, for a particular class, with everything like that, when they started instituting custom lineages, mm-hmm. where you can pick your traits for the individual one, because they want you to be able to choose whatever race, base race that that you want. So, but um, yeah, I mean, it, it's pretty it's pretty interesting how they're they're doing that now. Although, I mean, I'm kind of old school. I, I start to think. You know, you want you want the best fighter or barbarian and all that. You're gonna go with the half orc. Well, versus... in zero edition, you didn't even pick class. You did Mm-mm. pick elf. You picked elf. I'll pick That's dwarf. true. <laughs> but you know, justify. But, but then again, what you just said, one of the you you love the fact that your Ford, who is not playing a mar- well, I mean, I guess paladin. But Paladin really wasn't his main class. He was warlock. Yeah, it was that. warlock, and you and you know it. And you t- and at the end, he took levels. He went back to taking levels in warlock. I think he only took three levels of Paladin mm-hmm. to probably get to the um, the oath. Mm-hmm. And then after that, he took he took uh, he took levels in warlock again. So, but there's there's somebody who really wasn't a martial expert. Mm-hmm. So, you know, and here he is a half orc. I thought that was, a, it was, that's, that's a very interesting breaking of the mold. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I mean, yeah, I guess this is a good point. So what classes do you think would be good for, all right. So we, while we established that the best classes for half orcs with their ability, with their, you know, abilities and such uh, would be probably, yeah, fighters, barbarians things like that and they've got that inner kind of rage what some a- good suggestions like uh ranger and i actually uh, played one before on uh, half orc ranger yeah so. i was gonna say what all right i'll go around so you're half orc ranger john how about you what do you what if you're gonna build a or half orc rather what would you what do you think is an optimal class for it? i mean i don't know if there is an optimal but i definitely would go barbarian Unless there was already one in the party, if I had to play Avalon. All right. And Frank? Optimal Barbarian. Does that work? Okay. Now, how about if I, I want to go the other way around with this? How about a class that breaks the mold, but you think would work really well with a half orc? Uh, so, Frank, let's start with where you ended. Uh, let's go Cleric. Uh, because you, you don't anticipate this guy is healing you and when you wake up out of your coma to look at this ugly half breed it's like uh, okay uh, so I would say cleric would be the weird one yeah plus you got your bonus for your constitution checks with uh, the buff in uh, constitution so. yeah. and not shaman I would mm-hmm. go legitimate cleric le- legitimate cleric of a recognized religion that you would not expect i mean who's to say the orc also couldn't have been raised uh, with human parents you know Mm -hmm. uh that absolutely it fits i mean it does totally fit david how about you how about uh how about a class that's how about a class that's not really traditional but you think absolutely works really well well, like for the half orc, uh, one of the things that I saw, I was looking at uh, there. There is a variant on, on the half orc, and then I looked at it and I looked at it again. It's from Eberron, uh, the variant with that. And one of the things that their dragon mark gives them 
is that they're keen investigators. So you could always play an investigator type uh, class. It could, like I said, ranger or something like that, use the investigator background, which we have now, and uh, set them up as, you know, half orc sleuth, you know, uh, you know. That'd be interesting. Yeah. Sure, or Holmes. Yeah, yeah. sure, or Holmes. <laughs> there sure we go. Combs. He's going to have the hat. Yeah. And the, and the coat. Yeah. That's with, okay. With the rogue, uh, the inquisitor, you know, that's, you can roll with that too. You know? Oh, orc inquisitor, I think would be really interesting. Mm-hmm. All right, John, how about you? How about a, what weird class would you put at orc, but you think would work really well? I don't know if it'd work so great, but it'd be fun to play a half orc uh, bard. Mm-hmm. You're, was, like, that's you're right. always I was getting in people's that. face. High charisma, man. You can write. Yeah. Plus, you've got a built in bonus to intimidation checks. Right. So, you get so yeah. Yeah. That would totally work, man. You could give him the half mask. Mm hmm. What about a, a, a half orc and the, you get the master of blades, you know, which is, I've heard is absolutely broken bardic, you know, a bardic archetype. <laughs> that might be very interesting since they are pretty good weapon masters. Yeah. All right. Yeah. How about, well, so we just did the half orcs. How about we do this for half elves now? Okay. So what's okay. your most traditional aligned class for half elf, uh, David? Uh, class for half elf. You see, half elves fit in everything. I, mean, I know that, they're the min maxing race. There we are. That's they really that's are true. once across the board. In five e, they are. Yeah. Um, I would say to kind of play against that with a uh, half. Fine. Elf, we'll just we'll just go with the non tradition. What you yeah. think would be the weirdest one that works? Yeah, uh, barbarian. You know, look at Rob on Calamity. You know, I mean, he's a he's a half elf barbarian. You know, and that totally works. Yeah, that I like that, and that does sort of go against the mold because he's you got high of, charisma. You for do his figure. Assessment. I mean, you do sort of figure half elves are kind of like more delicate. Mm-hmm. You know, and Dex you're sort of more dexterous, but I mean, right? Tannis, I don't think was Tannis. Have I believe was a fairly large guy. If I remember the pictures right, he was uh, stout. Yeah, he was stout. He was not like this delicate, thin elf. Uh, all right, Frank, how about you? Uh, pick a weird, a weird combination. Paladin, make him a Isn't mountain. He's... Make him a mountain knight, because their thin frame just doesn't give the intimidation factor of a large cavalry charge. Uh, when you look at uh, the elves in traditional uh, literature or movies. Uh, they're thin, they're light, they're fast moving. Okay, let's throw 300 pounds of freaking armor on these guys and make them what real knights would be, city ducks, if they get pushed over because uh, it's going to take forever for them to climb up. Uh, but, yeah. you know, you pull that visor back on your helmet and you've got, you know, the big religious insignia on there. The last thing you're going to think of is some shallow cheeked elf. Hey, for me, I, I'm like, no, I'm just going to kill you and wear you as a hat. <laughs> All right, John, how about you? Well, I think maybe I would go with uh, the... Uh... Warlock, because warlocks you think you don't really think of as really being elf related for the uh, most part. Oh, I guess maybe the Fey ones. But yeah, the, I could see Fey. Yeah, I could see. If you had a Fey patron, it might fit. In fact, I have one that a different character that has that. But uh, but yeah, I, I think they're a little different because you don't see half elves as necessarily being in pact with you know other planar creatures for the most right. part which is funny because you know considering the fact that so many uh people are like suspicious of them you think they'd be lonely and if some like being would approach them you know to be their buddy hey look i got this friend of mine um all right so Let's see. I'm going to go to breaking the stereotypes. So we sort of touched on that, but I mean, what else could you do to break uh, stereotypes? Uh, 
pick one or the other. And um, all right, uh, David. Wow. Uh, to break the stereotype, uh, like I said, you know, uh, you know, half elf playing like one of the, like, you know, uh, you know, heavy melee classes and all that monk, you know, monk would be a good way to go around it and all that. Although we saw that in Critical Role with Dyron, you know, so, but yeah, I mean, uh, I think a half elf monk would be great. You know, to kind of help break that role. That yeah. big go. All right, Frank. Drunken master. There we go. Half elf, drunken nice. master. Uh, I'm going to take both of them and go opposite sides. I'm going to make every half orc French, very eloquently <laughs> speaking, very uh, polite to them. And then I'm going to take uh, the elves and turn them into some limey bastard right out of an Irish tavern. There you go. They spit, they swear, and they're personally offensive, even with their high charisma, because they're funny, but they are going to be rude as shit. To they're them. tavern brawlers. They're tavern brawlers. Yeah, ah, They get drunk, that. and they fight all the time. Each other, somebody else. It doesn't, doesn't really matter. Yeah. <laughs> I they're, need to make one of these for Murder Hobo. Awesome. Welsh. Great they're, idea. They're Welsh. They're Welsh. Welsh. <laughs> yeah. For all our Welsh viewers out there, I, I think I hit that one on the head. All right, John, how about you? Well, let's see. For half elf, I think it would be interesting if you want to break the mold by having the half elf concentrate more on the their humanistic side and trying to like get away from the idea. Like, try basically have them try to hide the fact that they're the elf and and the, try to play down the charismatic aspect of it, maybe. Where they don't, they're not very social. Maybe they're just, uh, you know, they're they're very shy. They're very downtrodden, almost. So you would, and said once again, you would think that where they, if you have all these people picking on them, they would be a little bit more shy and downtrodden than they are. Well, that's why I thought it was so weird. Yeah, I just said I thought it was really strange that here everyone picks on them, but yet they get along with everybody. So. I, I never could quite figure that one, but hey, it, I, I, I still I like the thought of them being versatile and yeah, and being basically they can get along with people. Um, all right, I'm gonna you know what and we're all, time is almost done. I'm gonna I'm gonna leave this one as the last one. Why no half dwarves or half gnomes or half halflings, which should be what quarterlings? Why why don't we have those other races as half? Uh, all right, Frank, start with you. Want, you. Do you want the non safe for work answer? I was going to say the mechanics. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, Go I, ahead. I, yes. I, I yeah. think the size difference uh, would inhibit no uh, creativity. I mean, that and, uh, and I, I no, thought about No, giving this. birth, man. I mean, <laughs> I like, know. you have the, you know, it's like you have the Great Dane and the Chihuahua. Well, they're like bulldogs. They're, you're going to need help getting them out. Uh, yeah. You know, I, I really thought about this one because I thought, why why are there no half dwarves? Uh, my opinion would be is that a dwarf would rather die than mate. Leave us anything else. <laughs> that, that, yeah. that is my opinion. I knew this was going to be a good question. Uh, all right, John. Um, well, I don't really know why they don't allow it in terms of D&D &D, uh, in the published material. I actually have in my campaign uh, added a bunch of half races that aren't normally added. I have a half goblin, half uh, halfling. Oh, God, yeah. I call them hoblings or half. That is, I like yeah, that. that's pretty good. I like goblins, that. like you... goblin and uh, half elf. I mean, a halfling mix. Mm -hmm. so, um, and I've added a few other ones, but when, um, when you thought of these, I think it's you, a matter of did, like it's just did, too many options. You know, they don't really want to cover yeah. every single thing in the book because, and it comes down to it, you could just be human and then just take whatever trait you want. That, you know, you know, games games seem to be going that direction, by the way. And I was mm -hmm. gonna, oh shoot, I forgot what I was just gonna say. 
I was trying to interrupt oh, you because okay. I was laughing. Uh, hey, pop oh, culture, oh, we almost got was, one. <laughs> I remember, I remember I was going to ask him, like, did you think of biology when you created all these and when not that your races would be biologically uh, compatible? Not really. I mean, I just, <laughs> what they look like, you know, yeah. I just kind of made up. So. It's fantasy. It's, 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 I mean, and that is true. I've, I've heard the whole thing about, you know, biologists you should consider but i'm like this is a freaking fantasy story you know it's all fake and everything so who cares all right it's because all, all dwarves have penises all of them. <laughs> all of them well we almost <laughs> got a half dwarf uh half elf in the <laughs> last hobbit movie and all that yep. with killy or philly one of them yeah yeah he was the true love you know so it was so adorable oh yeah we almost had we almost got one so <laughs> What do you think? So why do you think no half dwarves are, you know, are all the others? I, David. I, I, there racial, has to be- racial bias probably would be the would be the thing, you know, would probably be the thing, you know, even though in today's society, we're, you know, becoming more diversified and all that in fantasy realm. You know, we're trying to incorporate that in. But a lot of times there's not that much diversity amongst some of the races. So, you know, especially in Greyhawk. Mm-hmm. I do. I mean, I do believe to it to a degree. I don't mind some of the ha- some of the ones in our cover being half uh, being allowed, but there is there is certain biology when it comes to like what you let's say dragons and and humans. It just shouldn't happen. Dragons are lizards. That's a comp- they're not mammals. It's they they're incompatible. Right. Should be a right. little bit of that, but honestly. You do you. You run your games however you want. It's your game. All right. So since we're a couple minutes past nine, uh, I guess this will be the, uh, I'll just go one more time for final thoughts and they can be whatever you want. Uh, let's see, David, you first. Shatter the stereotypes. That's what I say. That's my final thought. Just go ahead to, to take Frank's suggestion, you know, take some of the ideas from John and, you know, create your own, you know, and just kind of shatter the mold. Yeah. That's uh, my final thought. All right, John, any final thoughts? Everyone should be human. Everyone should be human. <laughs> there, there is your old school gamer right yeah, there. Yeah, everybody's right there. human. That, that is right there. I am so there. It seems like game systems are starting to go this route, by the way, of, of put giving uh, racial traits that you can add to your human. Um, and I think that's, I actually think that's a really good idea. I, I love it. Uh, Frank, Carol final said thoughts. It. You do you. It's your game. You run it how you want to see. If you want a half bugbear, half Sagian, half lizard man, whatever. Boy, those sound three. good. Those yeah. all That's sound pretty three. damn good. It's your game. Do what you want. Uh, just remember, uh, it's a fantasy game. Don't go ape shit on social media about, oh, you're a racist, blah, blah. Shut up. Okay. Shut up. It's a <laughs> it's fucking a game. game. That's my <laughs> final thought. That's what gets me hate mail on my other Twitter account. <laughs> I, you know, I, I, I like how, um, I will like say, I will like how d and is now focused that not everybody, in one, not everything in that one race is evil. That it's, it's, it's like everyone else, you get good and bad, you know, within it. So I, I sort of like that direction they've been going in. It's an, and I think it's a very interesting direction. Yeah. Uh, let's see. So I guess I guess that's it. So it's let's see. We had to follow us on Twitch, follow us on Twitter, check out our YouTube archives, check out all those awesome games from last week. Uh, let's see what else is there. There was our well, we have our Discord channel, which if you you can join to talk about DD or the convention. We're having a convention. If you're a there you go. If you're a dungeon Woo. master or you got a panel. Uh, go to our tabletop events page and sign up. We would love, we, we want more GMs uh, to be running stuff. Although I think there are GMs, we, we definitely have more that are on there now that are just waiting to make sure that they can, are available that day. I'll, I'll bump them. I swear to God, I'll bump them. If you guys sign up, I'll bump all those. <laughs> well, I'm going to, I will tell you this much. I'm going to sign up to do. I'm, gonna I'm do bumping Carol first. <laughs> Carol gets bumped first. <laughs> I'm going to sign up to do, well, I'm going to do a seminar. I'm not going to do a game. I'm going to do a painting <laughs> seminar and 
I'm debating whether or not what time I want to put on there if I want to just leave it open because I can't leave it open. You have to put a time in there. You'll figure it out. I'll figure it out. Uh, let's see. So please go and sign up and, and, you know, soon enough, attendee badges will be open and you can start signing up for games. Let's see. What else is there? There oh. is, well, no, I know that I'm just talking about a bunch of stuff. There is, of course, uh, there's our podcast. I forget. I don't remember if we mentioned the podcast. We do have an audio only podcast out there. Oh, okay. <laughs> you forgot yeah, the I, audio only like, podcast. This is the podcast. <laughs> no, this is the Twitch stream where you see our mugs. Then there's also the audio only podcast where you don't. Uh, where is that they can find that, Frank? Tidyurl.com, M Hobo Inc. Audio. Oh, and of course, there's our merch like Frank is wearing. He's got one of our shirts, uh, which you, you can get. And where do you buy that? Tinyurl.com RPG swag. Okay, and then of course, like to thank uh -oh. our sponsors. Uh, oh. Are we okay? Oh, John's I think we gone. lost John. That's okay. It's the end of the night. Um, basically, we've got oh, we've got Adventure Sense uh, by Offitch Games, and they also yeah, make it to the Shine System. And what else we got? Uh, what else do they make? Oh, they have the, uh, RPG the cat. cat and they got the cookbook too. And then of course, yes, Pirate Dog Dice. So, uh, you know, I, I said, I have my awesome Taryn set and they rolled really well for Taryn. I, I can't guarantee you they're all going to roll well, but I can tell you mine did for Taryn. They don't roll well for any other character. For friggin There's going to be a set for door prizes. A lot of door prizes. Already. Ooh, yeah. There's, there is door prizes at the con. Uh, there's there's a. I know you've also got like a couple of Walmart gift certificates and such. Um, that's true too. I believe if you're looking, if you want to be a vendor uh, or you want to be an artist vendor, uh, I believe you will also accept prize support as payment. So there you go. If you've got, uh, I, I actually have somebody who's very interested in doing that, uh, who sells glasses. Hey, Just Kyle glasses. Jr., are we going to end this show? Yeah. I, was I know. Say, well, there's all this stuff. stuff. <laughs> hey, there's all this shit we got to get through because you have like now 9 million announcements at the end. I think and we got I think it could cover. Otherwise, I'm going to just leave one more thing. Uh, I'll be starting to stream mini painting on Saturday at 12.30 p.m. Uh, Eastern time on Muses underscore touch at, or Muses what? touch on, Me. no, it's Muses underscore touch. I think I know my name. Tiny on URL, this, I'm telling you. Tiny no, URL. no, no. I just, I just said, I just take and copy and paste the links. But it's, yeah, it's Muses underscore touch at twitch.com. So hopefully I'll see you there. Uh, it should, looks like it's going to be a really good time. I've, I've got a bunch of people I think are coming, so chat should be fun. Take uh, us home, Frank. <laughs> anything else? Because I think I covered everything. Uh, cred and uh, calamity, calamity this week. Yep. 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 See our campaigns; they're awesome. Yeah. And that's good job, it. Kyle. Everybody, wow. wave. Hold on. Come on, I'm not Kyle. Kyle's me. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Mwah. Mm.